Hello to our friends here in the building and on Zoom and on Facebook. Uh, we will begin our service with our prelude. We are very um, happy to have Anna Roy be our accompanist today. So Anna will start us with our prelude. morning to our Karen speaking friends Galu again to our Welsh speaking friends Borada Borada to to our Chinese speaking friends uh, Nihao to our friends from the Philippines Magadan Umagapo Magadan Umagapo and to everybody welcome no matter who you are or where you're from or where you happen to be at this very moment we are so glad to have you as part of the community of First Baptist Church. And if you're a visitor with us in the building, there should be cards in the pew racks in front of you. If you've joined us on Facebook, um, if you could let us know you're here by leaving us a comment, and you can always learn more information about us uh, by emailing welcome at fbcburlingtonvt.com. So on this Remember that April showers, there's something good about that, right? <clears throat> On this wonderful morning, thank you for being here. Let us rise and sing our uh, congregational introit, which is printed in the bulletin. join me in the call to worship. As you walk with us, as we journey together, Lord, your word fills our hearts. As you speak with us, as your love is revealed, Lord, your fire burns in our hearts. As we proclaim what we have seen and heard, May all people be drawn to you, the risen Lord. Our first hymn today, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain. It's
seated. We come to worship in order to be renewed and encouraged and to fit our lives more closely to God's plan for us. We come with our hearts and our minds and our souls and our bodies and our resources. And giving of ourselves in the service of God is part of our worship. To contribute to the ministries of First Baptist Church, you can give electronically through the Vanco Mobile Faith Engagement app, through our website, or folks at home can send a check to the church office. Folks who are here, if you're called to give, you can give, you can put your offering in the offering plate. However you participate with us, through your prayers, through your presence, through your financial gifts, all of it is deeply, deeply appreciated. Our many offerings will now be received.
Let us pray. Receive these gifts this morning, O God, author of every good gift. Out of the bounty of our hearts, we respond with faithful generosity and love. May these gifts become blessings for others as they have been blessings for us. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the children to join me over here on the front pew. Hi, folks. How are you today? It's kind of a a day to just kind of sit around, right? It's a day to be cozy. To sit in the car for hours, looking forward to that, I'm sure. Now, have you ever had this experience where you might be reading a book or you might be watching a TV show or you might be playing a game and someone speaks to you and you don't even hear them? Does that ever happen to you? Has that ever happened? Yes, it happens sometimes. You're, you're just kind of focused on one thing and you're not even really paying attention to what's going on around you. Well, in your Sunday school class today, we're gonna, you're going to be hearing about a story about these two folks who are walking along a road and 
they're so it's the story it's easter night and they don't understand what's going on their friend jesus had died and they were sad about that and there's all these crazy stories about angels and empty tombs and they don't know what to make about that and so they're just talking and Jesus comes and is walking with them and they don't even recognize him. They're too busy thinking about all that had happened and talking about their fear and their sadness. And they don't even know who this guy is. They're kind of like, who is this guy? How do you know, not know what's going on? And the story, they don't recognize him. They walk with him all day long. And they don't recognize them until that night when they have supper together. And then their eyes are opened and they see him. And so it makes me think that sometimes we don't see God's presence and Jesus's presence around us. We don't see, sometimes we get so focused on the hard things in life and, oh, I've got a test to do and I've got homework to do and I've got chores to do and blah, blah, right? Do you sometimes feel that way? And we don't see, hey, you know what? God's with us. Hey, look at that beautiful flower that just bloomed. It wasn't blooming yesterday. Look at, the, look at the beauty that God has given us. Look at the smile that my mother just gave me because she loves me so much. So I want you to think about maybe this week when you get kind of in the doldrums or you get all focused on hard stuff and grumpy stuff to remember that Jesus is walking with you and saying, hey, why don't you look up? Why don't you notice the blessings that are in your life? You think you can do that? Maybe. It might be hard on this gloomy day. But Jesus is with you even on a gloomy day. Okay? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Yes. Good. Let's have a prayer together. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus who shows us that life and light and joy and happiness is how you want us to live and how you set up the world for us to live. And we thank you for Jesus who walks with us all the time, even when we're having hard times, when we're having good times, Jesus is always there. So help us to be on the lookout to see him and to recognize the blessings and the goodness in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys can go to your class. Now come to our time of prayer, our opportunity to just rest in the presence of God, to know that God is with us, hearing our prayers, supporting us, uh, commiserating with us, encouraging us. So I invite you to put your two feet on the floor and your shoulders back and just breathe. Let us breathe in God and breathe out peace. Breathe in God and breathe out peace. There'll be moments of silence in the prayer where you can lift up your own prayers. And when I say resurrected God, you're invited to say, we lift our prayers to you. Holy God, we have gathered here this morning to sing your praise and to seek your presence. We know that April showers bring May flowers, and so we thank you for this rain. We have felt the breezes of spring. We have seen flickers of sunshine and the flowers and the new plants coming forward, beckoning us toward new life. We know that you love us unendingly, and we thank you for this amazing gift. 
We thank you for Jesus, our Savior, who reveals to us your will for our lives, who speaks the truth to us and leads us in the ways you would have us go. We thank you for the many blessings with which you shower our lives. Hear us as we lift up our prayers of praise and thanksgiving. Resurrected God, we lift our prayers to you. Gracious God, we pray for ourselves and for others. Like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, we are burdened with grief and battered hopes. We search for you in our daily lives. We pray for those who are striving against illness and difficult circumstances. We pray for Shirley, Gail, Chris, Kathy, Ted, Wyatt, for Nage, Rebecca, and all those who are on our hearts. Bring them healing, comfort, and strength. Bring strength and solace to those who are grieving the death of a loved one. We pray for those in our communities who are burdened with addiction, those <clears throat> with addiction themselves and for their families. We pray for those experiencing homelessness. We pray for our sister churches, New Alpha Missionary Baptist Church and Iglesia Bautista Onidos en Amor de Mayagues. We pray for the families of those who were shot this week for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And we pray that our leaders can agree to common sense measures to address gun violence. We pray for the people of Sudan caught in sudden and extreme violence. We pray for the people of Burma and Ukraine who are so tired of the violence. We pray for the people of Israel and Palestine of Haiti and of Mexico. We pray for those who have become refugees and for those who have welcomed them. We pray for Bill and Ann Clemmer in the Congo and for all of our American Baptist global servants around the world. Hear us, Lord, as we lift up our prayers of supplication. Resurrected God, we lift our prayers to you. Redeeming God, we lift up all these prayers to you, knowing that you hear them. Hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is number 480, Open My Eyes That I May See.
Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 38. Now, on that same day, Easter day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? <laughs> they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Will you join with me in a spirit of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. If you remember last week, I talked to the kids about how Easter is not just one day, it's actually 50 days. 
And so today on the third Sunday of Easter, we're still looking at stories from Easter day. We're still on Easter day. That first extraordinary day when Christ was risen, defeating evil and death. So back on the day when we had the baskets and the jelly beans, that day, we heard Matthew's account of the resurrection and how Jesus first appeared to the women there. Last week, we heard John's account of Easter evening and how Jesus appeared to the disciples in a locked room. And today we have Luke's account. In Luke's telling, Jesus does not first appear at the tomb to Mary or to the other women or to Peter and the disciples. In Luke, Jesus first appears on this road outside of Jerusalem to two people who, one of whom we don't even get their name and the other one, we've never heard of them before and we never hear of him again. And he walks along with them. This is his first risen experience. He's walking along with them, listening to their stories of grief and disappointment, completely unrecognized. Jesus walks with us whether we recognize him or not. On that day long ago, two people walked away from Jerusalem toward Emmaus, a village whose actual location is lost to history. Luke tells us that it's seven miles from Jerusalem, but where exactly, we don't know. There are lots of ideas, but none of them, none of them are for sure. These two walked away from their community, away from their hopes and their dreams and their understandings of what was important and, when po and was possible. They had been true believers. They had listened to Jesus, they had worked with Jesus, and they had been certain that Jesus was the Messiah who would free them and all the people. The most poignant verse of this whole story is when they say, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. After all they had been through, their hope was now talked about in the past tense. They were grieving the death of their friend. They were exhausted from the tumult of the days leading up to Jesus's arrest and crucifixion. And they were confused by the outrageous stories told by the women of empty tombs and visions of angels. And so they're walking together and they're talking together, trying to process all this and make sense of it. They were so deep in their conversation that they don't even notice when it is that Jesus starts walking with them. They're startled when he asks them a question. All of a sudden they stop. They stood, Luke tells us, they stood still looking sad. They were so wrapped up in all that had happened that they really couldn't imagine that, no, that this person didn't know about it. What's really cool is that what they don't realize is that with his questions, Jesus invites them to tell their story. He invites them to tell their story. And they tell this stranger, this person who just shows up, they tell them, tell this stranger everything. Their grief, their loss of hope, their incredulousness about the women's stories of an empty tomb. And then the stranger tells their story back to them, teaching that the Messiah would suffer before entering into glory. He tells their story back to them and they begin to feel better, but they still don't recognize him. 
They continue to walk along the road. And when they get near Emmaus, the stranger walks ahead as if to leave them. The two invite him to stay at Emmaus since it's getting dark and the roads aren't safe at night. This act of hospitality helps them to turn from their inward focus on themselves. They're finally thinking less about what's happened to them and thinking about, oh, wait, this guy shouldn't be walking on the road by himself. So the act of hospitality starts to get them out of their own head. But it's not until they share a meal. And when Jesus takes the bread and breaks it and blesses it and gives it to them, that they finally recognize their teacher and savior and friend. And then he disappears. This recognition jolts them out of their self-focused ennui. And they race back to Jerusalem to share what they had learned. They'd taken all day to get to Emmaus, but now they turn around and run back to Jerusalem. And actually in the next verse after this story, Jesus appears again with the community. Now, this story leads us to think about when and where and how we can recognize Jesus in our lives. And it affirms that Jesus walks with us whether we recognize him or not. So Jesus is with us, but can we recognize him? Now, when we are grieving, like these two folks are, we naturally turn inward. We're overwhelmed and we have no energy to see beyond our grief. We say we had hoped about many things. That's the deepest part of our grief, right? We had hoped that it, things would be different. Jesus walks with us in these times. He quietly accompanies us, caring for us and sustaining us until we're able to perceive life beyond our grief. When we're tired, when we're afraid, when we're simply burdened by the obligations of our overextended lives, we turn inward. We become short-sighted, wedded to our own point of view with no energy or desire or any inclination to reach out beyond ourselves. Jesus walks with us in these times. He encourages us. He cajoles us even, saying affectionately, as he said to those two, oh, how foolish you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. He sticks with us until we are able to open our hearts and our minds to other people and other points of view and able to see. Now, I want us also to notice that Jesus comes to these two on a little road to a little village that's now lost to history. It's mentioned in scripture, so everybody knows the name of Emmaus. Nobody knows where that town is. It was not much of a place. Jesus doesn't show up on the steps of the temple or at Pilate's palace. Just like in Luke's Christmas story, Jesus comes to a bunch of nobodies in an out-of-the-way place. We would love it if Jesus would come to us with flashing lights and a big sign saying, here I am, bursting out onto the world stage to, for everybody to see. So we could say, see, that's our guy. That would be pretty convenient, yes? That is not how Jesus works. 
Jesus comes from unexpected quarters. As a stranger, at first unnoticed, and he lifts up and he honors those whom society tends to overlook or to discount. If you're looking for Jesus among the rich and powerful, that's probably not where you're going to see him. And let's also notice, this is such a great detail in the story, that Jesus was going to keep on walking if the two had not invited him to stay. Jesus comes to us quietly and invites us to invite him in. There's no pressure. There's no coercion. We're given the freedom to welcome him or not. There's no heavy handedness. Jesus is just there. But when, but when we do recognize Jesus and we do welcome him into our lives, our lives can be transformed. Our hearts are warmed and our day is brightened and our spirits are renewed and our understanding is expanded. And we are given power to reach beyond ourselves, to share Christ's love and welcome with others. So as we go about our day, how are we to recognize Jesus with us? Last week, Shay, my child, and I were looking for a long black skirt and a scarf. That Shay is in an Indian dance class and needed this outfit for the class. And so I looked online for an Indian clothing shop near me. And I was directed to Deepa's clothing store in Winooski. And when we got to the address, we saw a small sign for Deepa's in the window of Saga Matha's grocery store. Saga Matha grocery store. And that store was full of grocery items, but no clothes. So I asked the Nepali woman behind the counter if she knew of another store where we could find an Indian or Nepali skirt. And she was quiet for a moment and she looked at me and she looked at Shay and she considered for a moment. And then she said, follow me. And so we wound our way through the market and down some narrow cellar stairs and around a corner and here and there until we get to a big storage room full of clothing. And she immediately picked up a black skirt that was perfect for Shay. And when I said, well, we're also looking for a scarf, she picked out this beautiful black and gold. It was wider than a scarf, but... I don't even know what the name of it was, but a beautiful piece of fabric, scarf, gorgeous. And she handed it to Shay and she said, this is a gift for you. And like the two on the road to Emmaus, our hearts were burning that morning as love and acceptance and welcome was shared with us by an unexpected person. So as we move through this Easter season and beyond this Easter season, may we know that Jesus walks with us all the time, whether we recognize him or not. Jesus is supporting us, encouraging us, cajoling us to look for him in the stranger and the unexpected encounter. And may we pay attention to those in our lives who welcome us, who feed us. And may we welcome and care for others sharing Christ as we make our way through our day. Let us pray. Companion, Lord, we are grateful to travel this life with you by our side. 
Empower us to recognize your presence in our lives and in those around us. May we share your love through our welcome and service to others. Amen. Our baptism class for youth has started and it's going on for the next, uh, through May. And so if you know a young person who's interested in uh, learning about baptism, uh, please let me know. And adults who would be interested in being baptized, please speak to me and we can uh, set up a time to talk about that. There's some upcoming cool things that are that are coming up. One is um, next Friday, April 29th, we're having the intergenerational game night here at church. So we'll have pizza and then all sorts of different games. Bring your favorite, bring one. You know, you, you probably have a game in your house that you haven't played yet because nobody at your house wanted to play it, but bring it because maybe somebody here would want to play it with you. I have a few of those games. I might bring them. There is a sign Sign up on the round table in the narthex, or you can contact the um, church office. So we have a good head count of how much pizza to order. And then the following week on May 7th, we are participating in the Cots Walk. We have um, a number of folks who are on our walking team. And if there's still time, if you want to join and walk with us on May 7th, um, you can register online or let me know and I can register you. And if you want to support our walkers, um, you can write a check or use an envelope and make the check out to Cots Walk and um that would be great because it's a wonderful, the walk itself travels around through downtown Burlington, stopping at the various locations um, that COTS provides. Our Bible study um, on Mondays at 11.30 is on Zoom and it's in person. And we are going to be starting Paul's letter to the Philippians. So if, you're, if you've been thinking about Bible study, but you haven't wanted to come because we're in the middle of something, we're not in the middle of anything right now. So come and join us. And then our Zoom coffee hour is on Thursdays at 9.30. Are there any other announcements? Oh, yes. Monday afternoons at two o'clock, we are watching the TV show, The Chosen, um, which is a story about exploring the life of Jesus and his early followers. Um, we are gathering here, uh, actually right here to watch it on that TV. Um, two episodes, we'll watch episode three and four uh, tomorrow. Folks can also watch it at home. And we're still talking about figuring out a time when we can get together and just talk about it all together. So please join us if you'd like to watch The Chosen with us. And thank you so much to Anna for accompanying us and providing the special music. Our closing hymn is number 496, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms.
together, together in faith, together in hope, together in love. And we have been gathered together to be sent out, sent out with the welcome message of God's love. And so we go forth from this time to be living testimonies of God's love in this world. Amen.